have dominated digital debate in recent days, albeit for very different reasons. Taylor Swift's new album, The Tortured Poets Department, is smashing sales records as everything else she touches uh, smashes. Andrew Tate, meanwhile, is on a promotional spree for his online university. Taylor's offering her predominantly female audience a menu of big ballads and a bit of ex-boyfriend bashing. Song titles on her new album include The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived, My Boy Only Breaks His Favourite Toys, I Can Fix Him, No, Really I Can. Andrew Tate, meanwhile, wrote this open letter to his overwhelmingly male audience. Dear white men, you're being replaced because none of you have children, all you white boys lost control of your women, and now they won't accept multiple wives anymore. They don't want to do their God-given job anymore, so your genetic potential is stumped by the whims of some singular female. Other races have multiple ovens for bread. We're not cut, etc. So whose philosophy, Swift's feminism or Tate's masculism, offers the best hope for the future relations between the sexes, or are both, in their own way, equally bad? Who better to pass judgment on this and much more than the Daily Wire's Matt Walsh, his new series, judged by Matt Walsh, promises to settle disputes, squabbles and differences of opinion. Well, Judge Matt, welcome to Uncensored. Good to see you again with your elevated title hey. of Judge. The, the Honourable Matt Walsh, that's my title. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. We're going to come to your, your new show in a bit. It sounds great. Um, but first of all, this great cultural debate of our, of our week, Andrew Tate and his brand of feminism, which uh, Ben Shapiro, one of your colleagues, uh, of course, at uh, Daily Wire, um, hammered Andrew Tate, called him a filthy grift whose message to treating women uh, like trash uh, and is evil. Um, what did you think of that assessment of Andrew Tate? And is he a force for, for good, for bad, for a bit of both? How should we view him? I think it's a bit of both. I think I think uh, what I've always thought about about Andrew Tate is that I think often he diagnoses the problems correctly. He notices a lot of the problems in in, in society, and, and and his his sort of uh, observation of those problems uh, can oftentimes be correct. I think I think where I disagree with him is in the the uh, prescription. Like, what do we do about the problem? And so the tweet that you just read is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Uh, that there is an issue with, especially in the West, um, we're we're not having babies, we're not having, we're not we're not uh, you know reproducing. Um, the, the family has become sort of impotent. I don't think that the solution to that problem is polygamy. So I think that's the I think that's entirely the wrong solution. And there are a bunch of reasons why I don't think polygamy is the right solution. But one of the big ones is that you know children need fathers, and so. Uh, we have a problem in the West, not just uh, in, in the fact that, that children aren't being produced in the first place, but when they are produced, they're not being raised by a mother and a father in the home. And it's very clear, I think, history tells us, also science tells us, based on the fact that every child has a mother and father, pretty good, pretty good indi indication that every child is supposed to have a mother and father and be raised by a mother and father. Um, and when a man has multiple wives and a bunch of kids all over the place, the idea that he could be there to raise them, uh, I think, seems absurd. And, you know, I'd also say that what we have in our society right now is sort of a, it's, it's a form of polygamy, but we do it in succession, where we have, you know, uh, you have a spouse, and then you divorce them and get another spouse, and then you'll end up with a man that ends up having, like, five wives, and a woman who has five husbands, just one, one at a time, um, as opposed to in other societies where they have all the all those spouses at the same time. I think both of those setups are wrong. I think the right way to go about it is to get married, have a bunch of kids if you can, and uh, stay married and raise those kids because kids need a mother and a father in the home, attending to them, loving them, uh, you know, instructing them uh, so, all the while. So where does this leave us with Taylor Swift? I'm a self uh, acclaimed Swifty. I think she's an extraordinarily successful and dynamic young woman. Uh, but she's obviously, uh, she's not married. She's not had kids yet. She's incredibly influential to millions of young girls, including my own 12-year-old daughter. Um, her brand of feminism, as articulated through her albums, is, I don't know, I mean, how would you categorise it? I would say that she's incredibly honest, searingly honest on occasion. Yes, she does whack ex-boyfriends, but they kind of know what they're getting into, I think, at this stage, if they get into a relationship with, with Taylor Swift, because she writes about everything in her life. But also, she whacks herself. She's very self-critical. This is not somebody putting themselves on some great peerless pedestal. So how do you view her brand of feminism? 
Well, I will. First of all, I'll confess I'm not I'm not a, exactly a Taylor Swift scholar, although I do understand they're doing uh, college courses on Taylor Swift now at yeah. universities across the, across America.